Hello world! In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with AG Grid in a React application. To start, I'll create a blank React app using npx create React app hello. Now that this React app is created, I'm going to go into the folder using cd hello, and I'm going to install the AG Grid dependencies, which are AG Grid Community and AG Grid React. We will now run the project using npm run start. Now it's running, let's view the app in a browser on the right, and let's open up the project in our IDE on the left. Beautiful. Taking a peek at the package.json, we can see all of the dependencies that were given to the project. These two dependencies here are the ones that we installed using npm install. AGGrid community is the core of AGGrid, it has all of the logic. AGGrid react is the react rendering part of AGGrid. You need both to work with AGGrid in react. Just make sure that the version numbers here are the same for each. Back to our app.js. Now we don't need this junky stuff here. We'll just take this out and we can take this out here as well. So we're starting with an empty app. Right, let's start coding. I will import the AGGrid React component from the AGGrid React library and then include it in the JSX for the application. Every grid needs at least rows and columns. So let's create an array for our row data and an array for our column definitions and set these to AGGrid's row data and column defs properties. In this example, I want three columns called make, model, and price. So I'm going to create three column definitions, one for each column and stick it into the column defs array. And then for the row data, I will put in three sample rows. Each entry here will represent one row inside the grid. Okay, so here I've got my column defs and here I've got my row data. Note that the column defs define the fields inside the row data. So here I've got fields make, model, and price. And each of the row data items have make, model, and price. So the make column will display Ford, Toyota, and BMW. On the right hand side here, I can see that my grid is displaying, the data is there, but it's all mishy mashy. That's because I haven't included the grid styles. I'll do that now. We import two CSS files. The first is grid.css. This is the core CSS needed for the grid to work. The second is the theme. Here I'm picking one of the themes that comes with the grid. It's called AG Theme Alpine. We then apply the theme by setting the CSS class in the grid's parent div, and lastly, we set the size for the grid by setting a size again on the parent div. And voila, here is our simple grid, all programmed up in almost less than five seconds. For fun, I'll change it to use a different theme file. I'm now importing a dark version of the Alpine theme. I'll then update the class name of the parent div to the theme that I want, and bing, bing, bang, there's the grid in dark. I'll hit undo to go back to the original theme, now I'll comment this out altogether and we can see here the grid is now showing with no theme. You can do this if you want, if you wanted to style the grid yourself from scratch. Just remember, you need this file. The grid does some work if you don't include the core structural CSS. The width and the height of the grid is determined by the size of the parent div. Set whatever size you want here, the grid will then spread horizontally and vertically to fill this space. Now let's be good React citizens and put our row data and our column defs into state objects. We'll do that using the useState hook. Now in our apps, we have the ability to update row data by calling set row data and the ability to update the column definitions by calling set column defs. Let's do that now by loading some data from the server and then calling set row data. Here's some code I prepared earlier. Inside this use effect, I'm fetching from this URL. The result of this is JSON, so I'm converting the JSON into JavaScript objects. I'm then setting those JavaScript objects as the row data inside the grid using set row data. I can then see on the right hand side here, lots and lots of data. Cool. Let's take a closer look at these column defs here. There's lots of properties you can set on the column defs. For example, I'm going to enable sorting and filtering in all of the columns here using the sortable and filter properties. Now we can see on the right hand side that sorting is enabled for all of the columns as well as filtering being enabled for all of the columns. So again, all you need to enable sorting and filter is these two properties here in the call defs. Now there are tons of properties you can set on the call defs. I'm just picking two to demonstrate how to set things up. Please check the docs for all the cool things you can do with columns. Now there's one thing that's not very good here and that's the repetition of sortable and filter for each of the columns. So instead we're going to use a default call def to set this once across all of the columns. The default call def is right here, so I've got sortable and filter on the default call def and they're no longer at the individual column levels. Then default call def I've tied into the grid down here with the default call def property. And then on the right hand side you can see that everything is still working. I can still sort and filter by all the different columns. 
So that was a quick intro into column definitions. I want to move on now to properties on the grid component itself. There's lots of stuff you can configure here also. I'm going to look at two properties, row selection and animate rows. So row selection here allows us to select rows when I click or hold down shift and I'll select a bunch of rows. And then the other property here, animate rows. That one is when rows are moving, they will smoothly scroll into new positions, which is really, really nice. And just like column definitions, there's lots of properties for grid options as well. And like column definitions, check the docs for what to do, see how the grid can help you. The grid also fires lots of events. Here I'm coding up how to listen for the cell clicked event. I'm listening for the event down here using on cell clicked and I'm passing in my cell clicked listener. My cell clicked listener is up here and I'm printing the event to the console. If I then open up my console here and click on some cells, you can see that it's calling the listener and printing the event to the console. And you've guessed it, there's lots of events the grid can throw. Check the docs to see what they are. There is one more thing I want to show you before we finish up, and that is how to use the grid's API. We access the grid's API using a React ref. And then to demonstrate, I'm going to put a button in here that will call the grid's API. So looking at the code I just put in, I've got a grid ref up here using the react use ref hook. Then that's linked up to the grid, then where the grid's defined. So we have ref equals grid ref. I've also added this button in here with a listener for when it's clicked, which is here. And this listener will then call deselect all on the grid's API, which is on the grid ref. Then on the right hand side here, I'll select a bunch of rows and then hit push me and I'll get deselected. And we're done. That is getting started with AG Grid in React. We set up a simple React app, we put AG Grid inside, we configured columns, configured the grid, listened to events, and used the grid API. This video is the first video in a series of how to use AG Grid in React. Continue watching the videos and learn much, much more. Mm -hmm.